Hey guys, thanks for coming back to my channel. My name is Rachel Seaver, and as always, I am here. Why do I say as always? <sighs> I'm here to talk about a book I read with you. I'm going to tell you whether or not I liked it. And this week's book is The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher. Wow, let me just start off by saying I really enjoyed this one. So, what's it about? Well, Kara is a woman in her mid-30s who's just gone through a divorce, like you do when you're a woman in your mid-30s. And she is a graphic designer and she works freelance, so she doesn't have a ton of money to throw around on going out and getting her own apartment and sort of starting her life over in her mid-30s. So she reaches out to family. Luckily, her uncle Earl offers her a place to stay. and. She takes it up immediately because she spent a lot of time in her youth, in her teen years, working at Uncle Earl's museum. And he says, hey, Kara, but he calls her Carrot, which is adorable. He says, Carrot, come stay at the museum. There's a spare bedroom that you can sleep in. And I'm getting old and I could really lose your help uh, taking care of things around here. And so she's like, oh, Awesome. So she goes and she stays at his museum. Now, the museum that Uncle Earl owns is sort of a roadside oddities museum. It's the type of place that if you were doing a cross country drive, you couldn't help but stop at because there's just all kinds of crazy stuff inside, like just wacky, um, out of the blue taxidermy and like skulls and fossils and like all kinds of artifacts and crazy occult stuff. And it's it's an oddities museum, right? So Kara goes and she stays with her uncle Earl and she's helping him out. She's fixing up the museum's website. She's building their social media presence. She's helping him uh, catalog a bunch of the artifacts because there's just tons of stuff. Like he's built up a lifetime of just stuff in this museum. And uh, slowly she starts to find out that like Uncle Earl's not doing so hot. He's got some issues with gout. And one of his doctors says like, hey, dude, you're getting old. You need a surgery if you want to stay mobile for like the next however many years of your life. And so he's very hesitant to ask. But he says, hey, Kara, would you mind managing the museum for a little while while I go get the surgery taken care of? And Kara is like totally happy to do it. She takes over running the day-to-day -day of the museum while her uncle can go have this surgery. And then crazy stuff starts happening. Uh, Kara and the barista who works next door actually discover that beyond just the sort of nightmare-inducing taxidermy that's all over this place, there's actually a portal to another dimension in the walls of the museum. And that's all I'll say. That's the synopsis because I want to be really careful not to give away any spoilers because this book is so much fun and I want you to read it. So why did I read this book? Well, uh, I was looking for another audiobook specifically, so I listened to a five-minute sample and I was like, yeah, I can, I can do this on audiobook. I think that this is something that will be really engaging and that I'll be able to pay attention and listen to while I'm doing stuff around the house or exercising or whatever. So what did I like about this book? Well, the first thing that really grabbed me was the way that the author pulled us through the feelings and emotions and had great descriptions of the horror that came uh, towards, you know, about the 25% mark of the book. Um, she did a great job of describing this through the voice of Kara. So this book is written from a first person perspective. So you get to, as the reader, you get to experience the horror as it's revealing itself through Kara's eyes. And just along those lines, one thing that I really enjoyed is I definitely got the impression that the author was pouring a little bit of herself and her own personality into uh, Kara. And that's pretty normal. I'm not critical of that. I think everybody who writes does that to some of their characters. Um, but the thing that I liked about it was, was that Kara is definitely like a little dorky and nerdy, which makes me think that T. Kingfisher, who also, that's a pen name, she also writes under another name. You Google it, you'll figure it out. But anyway, it made me think that T. Kingfisher is also like a super nerd. And in real life, uh, I would probably get along with her really well. Like, I just feel like she was someone who I would probably find 
uh, on a Discord and do a role-playing game with. Like, she mentions things like fan fiction and LARP and just, like, other things in the book. It, it just, like, Kara is definitely, like, one of the, the women that I'm friends with in real life, which makes me think that I would probably be friends with this author if I knew them in real life. So uh, that, that could be probably, like, why I enjoyed this book so much is that Kara felt very familiar to me. Uh, as a character. It felt like someone I really could know in real life. Another thing that I was really impressed with was that the book felt very well researched. Um, I don't know if the author has firsthand experience with working in an oddities museum or collecting a lot of oddities, but it definitely felt believable to me that this book was taking place in part in an oddities museum or like a curio shop. Um, I, I really felt like the setting had a lot of truth and weight to it. And so that was one of the things that made it so easy for me to buy into the other parts of the book that took place in another dimension that were very strange and bizarre because it was it felt so grounded in something in reality that made the exceptional, extraordinary things easier for my brain to accept. Um, and that's what allowed me to become afraid as I was reading it. So I felt like she had to have either done her research or knows a lot about oddity shops or curio shops. I'm not an expert, but I felt like the writer was. Um, along those lines too, I felt like uh, the research done into sort of the feelings, emotions, and trappings that surround a divorce or um, the end of a very long relationship also felt very believable and real. I don't know if the author had gone through a divorce or if someone who was close to them had gone through a divorce, but a lot of the um, feelings, emotions, and thoughts that Kara had about that and how they impacted the rest of the story also rang very, very true. So uh, it was very well researched. In fact, there is a line from the book that uh, like definitely spoke to me as someone who has gone through a divorce before, and so what's going on here is that Kara's having a phone conversation with her ex-husband um, after a lot of the horrific events have started sort of to wrap themselves up. And so she's she's commenting to herself, Oh, sweet blithering Christ, why had I married this guy to begin with? I was starting to think that half of the angst of a divorce wasn't the loss of stability. It was coming to terms with just how lousy your judgment had been. <laughs> Which was just like, yeah. Like, it, breaking up with someone sucks and going through a divorce, like, sucks so hard. But then, like, once you start to get over the grief and pain of that relationship ending, it's like, then you have to deal with the fact and reckon with the person that you were who was in that relationship to begin with. And, like, why did you, why did you think that that was a good idea? Like, why had your judgment been so bad? Like... And, you know, I think that a lot of people who go through that ask them ask themselves that question. And, and the truth is, is that you were just a different person. Oh, Jesus. Like, what was I thinking? Why did I like who, who was I like? What? Why did I think that was a good idea? Um, yeah. So as for cons, what were some things I didn't like? Well, um, this is going to be really nitpicky because. There wasn't much I didn't like about this book, to be completely honest. You know, maybe towards the end, uh, the editors didn't rein in some of the language that T. Kingfisher was using. Like, for example, she used the word dither a little too often. But that's super nitpicky. Like, if that's all I could find wrong with this book, then, you know, uh, then that should tell you how much I liked it. So who would like this book? Well, if you like a little bit of sci-fi with your horror, I think you'll be a fan of this book. Now, I think also people who are looking for a horror book with very accessible writing, I think that that is probably true here. But I think the only thing that would make it challenging to read are the same things that sort of made it challenging to listen to. Um, and that is the descriptions of the very bizarre nature of this other world. So I would say if you do choose to listen to this on audiobook, definitely expect that there are times when you're going to have to like give it your full attention to really be able to appreciate what the author's trying to convey. Um, and if you're going to be reading it, just kind of settle in that once you get into this other world, there are going to be some like crazy descriptions and it's going to be important for you to kind of take your time with those and chew them over so that you can um, visualize what the author's trying to explain. So how would I rank this book? 
Well, I think that the reading of it and therefore probably the writing of it definitely communicated well with my brain. So I definitely like that. I was eager to come back to it for the most part. Uh, there were some parts about maybe 75%, 80% way through the book where it was a little bit of a slow grind as we're trying to transition to wrapping up the story that felt a little slow, but it wasn't too hard to come back to the book when I had to step away from it. Definitely think this was an original story and I did not find any parts of the story predictable. And I think that the author did a really nice job of wrapping things up at the end. I think this is a great standalone story. Overall, it was very like self-contained and I liked that about it. I thought it was very good. Finally, something that goes into my mind when I'm thinking about how to rate a book is, do I want to read more from this author? And the answer is definitely yes here. I'm excited to come back to this author and I think I will be definitely reading the next book that I read of hers rather than listening to it on audiobook because I really dig what she tries to do with the descriptions. So I gave this book a four out of five spooky interdimensional monsters. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have read this book and what you thought of it. And finally, where do I put this book on Rachel's scary scale with mayonnaise being not scary at all and a ghost pepper being like the scariest thing I could possibly ever imagine? Because remember, I ripped this off of the Scoville scale. This is the scary scale. And I would say I would give this book the rating of horseradish or really cheap Americanized wasabi. It's definitely scary, it, but it fades kind of quickly. So the scares are momentary, but then there's something that's a little unrecognizable that kind of hits you in a different way that tends to linger. I don't know if that makes any sense. Maybe I'm just hungry. Like maybe I have to relate everything to food because I really really enjoy food. And um, eh, anyway, so thank you guys so much for coming back and watching another book review. Uh, I really appreciate it. I've got some fun things around the corner. Uh, so please stay tuned and come back for those. Subscribe, comment, ring a bell, do all of those youtube -y things if you like me and you want to see more stuff from me. Uh, I appreciate you. And yeah, until I see you next time, go read a book. Next video.